Hi, this is Dion from uh, FocusChemistry.com. Uh, for today's session, we'll be looking at um, amino acids. Um, for today, uh, the amino acids we're looking at, we're going to look at the how to relate pK values of amino acids to the structures, right? And uh, in your syllabus, you need to know how you assign pK values, which is given to you, to different functional groups in the amino acid. Now, before we start that, let's take a look at the amino acids that's in our syllabus. In our syllabus, the amino acid that we are that, 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 that are, is important for us are the amino acids called the alpha amino acids. And they're called alpha amino acids because um, this alpha is a Greek letter for A, and this alpha is referring to the carbon that is after the acid carbon. Excluding the acid carbon, right, the first carbon after that is called the alpha carbon. And of course, if there's another carbon over here, then it becomes a beta or a gamma carbon. Now you notice that the alpha is attached to the word amino, it means that the amino group, which is an NH2 group, is attached to the first carbon after the acid carbon. And that's why this kind of structures, this kind of amino acid, they are all called the alpha amino acids. Because the, alpha, the amino group is separated from the acid group by only one carbon. So this alpha amino acid basically has got this black color structure, a template, where this blue color R group can change. right? We're going to look at the different ways of classifying amino acids. One of the ways where people classify amino acids is through the R group. If the R group is neutral, then it's called a neutral amino acid. If the R group is acidic, then it's called the acidic amino acid. And of course, if the R group is basic, then we've got the basic amino acids. All right. um, there are 20 essential amino acids. The essential amino acids are basically amino acids that can, cannot be produced by the body, but are essential for health, and therefore we normally consume them through food. Right? There are 20 of them, which is in the all alpha amino acids. Uh, out of these 20, two of them are acidic. And these two are basically glutamic acid and aspartic acid. Three of them are basic, lysine, arginine, and histidine. And the rest of it, 15 of them, they're all under the neutral amino acids. Okay? Let's take a look at pK values of neutral, acidic, and basic amino acids. You notice that neutral amino acids has got two pK values. Now, these values are known as the pKa values. pKa values of amino acids. Normally, this kind of amino acid values will be given to you, and you need to know whether where on this particular molecule should you should assign the two pKa values. You notice that for neutral, there are two pKa values. For acidic and basic, they basically have got three pKa values. You may be wondering, amino acid contains an acid group and a basic group. It means are basic. So why will there be two pKa values? And that's because when we look at the pKa values of amino acid, we don't see the amine as a base. We see the amine as if it's a protonated amine, which means glycine's two pKa value will be seen in this way, where the amine is a protonated amine. Right? Then there'll be two pKa values. One is 2.34 and the other one is 9.6. So I call this pKa1 and pKa2. Now the question is, which pKa values should we assign to which functional group? Now typically for acids, for acids, uh, carboxylic acids, for example, for carboxylic acids, for example, Ethanoic acid, you can check out in the handbooks, right? pKa value of ethanoic acid is 4.74. Okay? Whereas um, pKb values for amines, for amines, right? For example, methyl amine, you find that the pKb value is around 3.5. You notice that pKa values and pKb values are pretty low, right? If you look at the protonated form of uh, amine, you find that the pKa of methyl amine, that means a protonated form of methyl amine, is actually 14 minus 3.5, and that will give you about 11.5. What you notice is that the pKa of the protonated amines are normally very big numbers. See that? Numbers is above 7. Whereas pKa values of acids are normally very low. So typically you'll notice that if there's only two, that means if this R group is a neutral amino acid, there's only one amine group and one acid group, you always end up with two numbers, one of which is low and one of which is high. Low means lower than seven, high means higher than seven. So if you look at this example, right, where pKa of the acid is usually low, pKa of the conjugated 
amine, conjugated acid amine is usually high, you can now assign these numbers to these functional groups. So the low number, 2.34, it's obviously for the acid. And the higher number, 9.6, is for this particular form of amine, is a protonated form of amine, and that's how we assign these two numbers. Okay, now take a look at, let's take a look at some of the examples of acidic and basic amino acids. How to handle three pKa values. So let's have an example of glutamic acid. Glutamic acid basically contains two acid groups. One is on the main chain. I'm going to draw the amine in this form, a protonated form. And then the bottom basically is three carbons, two of which is in an alkyl group, and the last one is an acid. So you notice that glutamic acid has got two acid groups and one amine group, and that's why you have got three pKa values. Now, let's take a look at three pKa values now. pKa1 is 2.19, pKa2 is 4.25, and pKa3 is 9.67. Basically, I'm just arranging them in ascending order. You notice you have two small values, two lower than seven and one higher than seven, right? Uh, these two numbers that's lower than seven is obviously due to the two acids, according to what we just discussed previously, right? And the high number should be for the amine, because amines as protonated is always a high number, big number, number that's bigger than seven. So we can basically assign the first one, 9.67 should be for this protonated amine, Right? And now we're going to decide between these two acid groups which is higher and which is lower. Now we learned before in ion equilibria, right, that the lower the pK values, the more acidic it is. So the question now is between these two acids, which is a stronger and which is a weaker acid? The one that's stronger will have the smaller value, the one that's weaker has got a bigger value. Now acidity is affected by a couple of things. Uh, electron withdrawing groups and electron donating groups. Electron donating groups like alkyl group, look at this particular CH2, CH2 2 here. Now this, this alkyl group here is closer to this acid than to this acid. And this acid basically is closer to the nitrogen. So let's take a look at a couple of factors. First, the effect of nitrogen. Nitrogen itself is an electron withdrawing group, electron withdrawing atom because of its high electronegativity. Right. Right? And so if this acid group it's closer, this acid group is closer to the end because it's separated by one carbon from the end, whereas this acid is further away from the end because it's separated by three carbons from this end. So this acid basically experiences a stronger electron withdrawing effect of this nitrogen. Electron withdrawing groups always strengthens an acid, right? So this acid becomes stronger than this acid because of a proximity to this electron withdrawing nitrogen group. And on top of that, this acid is also closer to electron donating R group. So this R group weakens this acid and this nitrogen strengthens this acid. And therefore we can say that this acid in the main chain is a stronger acid and this acid group in the R group is a weaker acid. Now being a stronger acid up here, its pKa value should be smaller and therefore it should assume a value of 2.19 and the weaker acid should assume a bigger pKa value which is 4.25. And that's how we assign these three pKa values for acidic amino acid. How you're going to do for aspartic acid is exactly the same as how we do for the glutamic acid. Let's take a look at basic amino acid. For basic amino acid, for example, lysine. Let's draw the structure of lysine on the board. Now, again, discussion of pKa requires us to draw the amine in a protonated form. Right? So basically, these are two protonated forms. Basic amino acid contains two nitrogen groups, one in the main chain and one in the R group. And the three pKa values are 2.2, 8.9, and 10.28. These are the three pKa values. You notice that one number is less than seven, two numbers are above seven. So it's quite obvious that the small number has to be for the acid. According to what we discussed previously, 2.2 should come to this acid. So the acid's pKa value is 2.2. Now the question would be, which of these two high numbers belongs to which amine group? Now for that, we're going to look at the basicity of the amines. <clears throat> okay, If you look at amines itself, I'm going to erase off this to change back to amine group. 
Amines basically are basic. They are basic compounds. Now, <clears throat> from ion equilibrium, we learned that we learned this: if the base is strong, the pKb will be very small, will be low, right? And its conjugate base, conjugate acid, sorry, its conjugate acids pKa value will be high. A low pKb will give you a high pKa value because the sum of these two gives you 14. That's what we learn in ion equilibrium. So the stronger the base, the lower the pKb, and the higher the pKa. So when we look at these two bases, we're going to see whether which is stronger and which is weaker. Now, what defines the strength of a base? We look at the lone pair. Because both nitrogen are lone pairs, and we look at which lone pair is more available to attract a H+, and that will be a stronger base. This nitrogen group here is closer to the electron withdrawing oxygen groups here. Oxygen is electron withdrawing. So if this nitrogen is closer to the electron withdrawing oxygen groups, then this lone pair is drawn, is drawn more to the acid group than this lone pair, because this lone pair is further from the acid group. So because it's further, the effect of the acid group on this nitrogen will not be so great, but it's greater on this nitrogen. So therefore, comparing these two nitrogen groups, this nitrogen here has got a lower availability of lone pair, whereas this nitrogen here has got a higher availability of this lone pair. And therefore, the base at the bottom here should be a stronger base. And the base on top is a weaker base. This is one way to explain which is stronger and which is weaker. The other way to look at it is to look at the presence of these additional four carbons. These four carbons basically is closer to this nitrogen here. These four carbons donate electrons, so the lone pair availability here is higher. The conclusion is still the same. This, uh, this base is still going to be a stronger base than the base on top. Now having a stronger base, right, it means that this pKb value is smaller. The pKb of this amine group is smaller than this pKb, and that will give you a higher pKa value. Which means that between these two protonated amines, I'm going to draw this back again, between these two protonated amines, the pKa of this is going to be higher than the pKa of this. And you look at these two numbers, there's one higher and one lower. So the higher pKa value should be for the amine below. So I'm going to write a number here. The pKa value for this is 10.28, the higher pKa value, and the one that's lower will be this one, which is 8.9. So you realize that we are dealing with bases, it's not so straightforward because you need to link pKbs to pKa's before you can decide which number goes to which particular functional group. So we've got these three functional groups assigned with the pKa values. The lowest is acid, 2.2. The next strongest acid is this main chain, main chain protonated amine, which is 8.9. And of course, the weakest acid of the three is this particular side chain acid group, which is 10.28. Now, that's all I have for you today. For more, for more information about amino acids, you can log on to our website at www.focuschemistry.com. Thank you for watching.